Hey Wait, there. So we have Paul Phipps. Yep. New new community member. Just wanted to hop on. And Great. Thanks for joining us. Out. And Paul, how 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 uh, how did you decide to to uh, or get 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 involved with Interrelapse? <laughs> Um, so I saw an NRA presentation at a conference in LA about a year and a half ago, um, okay. James and Matt. And so uh, uh, finally I'm in a role um, where I can utilize uh, the skill more. So I uh, just started as a network and infrastructure engineer after uh, being on a management path for too many years. So um, yeah. Very cool. Happy right. to join and learn and uh, get get more knowledge on how I can automate uh, the network and infrastructure at uh, my uh, company. Cool. So um, these uh, the weekly standups are um, because NRE Lab is an open source project. Um, these are kind of focused on the building of the platform and the lessons. Um, but also, as as James was alluding to, other sort of the other business of the of the project, you know, things like um, you know, sort of making noise periodically, whether it's conferences or launches of a of you know a new release or things like that. Um, so it's sort of you know sort of project business, if you will. Um, I think you know if you have thoughts about what would be useful to you um, as a as a user as a working network engineer. Um, in terms of, you know, lessons that would be useful to you, or if you have an idea for a lesson and you need help um, figuring out how to build it, um, you know, the, this forum and also the online community forum would be, would be great places for you to come provide that, that feedback. And if you want to, to contribute lessons, you know, we're more than obviously more than happy to have you help us with that. So. Okay, excellent. To see that you remember uh, NRE from way back uh, in LA, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was, but uh, yeah, it really uh, spoke to me, you know, um, trying to take on that uh, same model as, uh, you know, transitioning from DevOps to site reliability engineering. And uh, yeah, glad to uh, finally be putting some of that into practice. Cool. All right, I see that Matt just joined us as well. Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late. No worries. Why don't we go ahead and get started then? It's 807. Okay. That sounds good to me. Let me uh pull this. All right, so thanks uh, everyone for joining us. Um, it's uh, January 14th and uh, we have myself, Cloud Toad, uh, Derek, we have Winkworth, we have Lisa Kaywood, James Kelly, Matt Oswald, and Paul Phipps um, on the call. So um, <clears throat> this is what we have on our agenda for today we have a relaunch progress report i'm guessing that's going to be matt or lisa antidote kickoff which would be mad and the interlinks Andrew labs curriculum progress report which uh i'm gonna assume is me so <laughs> since i volunteered for that so why don't we get started matt are uh, you ready to talk yet Yeah. Um, so the the progress report uh, on the relaunch is uh, is going well. Uh, the relaunch itself is going well. Um, so just a little bit of context. The the big thing we've been waiting for um, is our uh, contractor that we've been that we hired to do some of the heavy lifting for the web UI. For Antidote Web, as, as well as our site, the uh, the former of which is the more recent effort, um, they uh, are effectively done with their work. 
there's just some very, very minor things um, uh, that, they, that they need to touch up on uh, in order to really, really be finished. Things like uh, there's like a little bug in the hamburger menu when you are on mobile, things like that. Um, but all of the really um, sort of substantial work is already merged. And uh, the good news is I deployed it all last night. And I'm trying to, while I'm talking, find the stand-up link on my computer so that I can actually share it with you because I'm joined on my phone right now. Forgot that I was going to try to share this. Uh, okay, I'm going to disconnect here. All right, can everybody hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Yep. Not seeing anything. Nope, haven't shared yet. I just wanted to make sure I was showing from the from the screen. Okay. Okay, where'd you go? There. So as with before, um, obviously the, the site is, is live, the domain is live, but please don't share it um, because we haven't launched yet and there's a lot more work to do. But this is the new site and uh, some of you have already seen this, um, nrelabs.io. The part that's, the part that's um, uh, here, the sort of the main site is, is, has been live for a while. This is like, the, like I said, the, the site is the first, this is the first bit of work that, they've, that they did, um, getting our blog into a format that's you know, a little bit more user friendly. Um, there's, there's, some, there's some things we want to change here, some of, the, some of the copy. So if you see anything here that, that, you, that stands out that you think needs fixed, you know, feel free to let us know. The part that has been taking a while um, uh, has been actually Antidote Web uh, because there's a, lot, there's a lot of work that was, that was needed, not just to bring that portion of the site up to speed with what was done here, but also to do things like replace guacamole. Um, that was one of the one of the big um, items that we wanted to do, um, and uh, and I'm happy to report that that part is also deployed and working. You'll notice if you uh, hover over this button, uh, you see the 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 domain uh, go.nrelabs.io. So it's uh, it's sort of a subdomain that we have for the actual web uh, application for NRE Labs. But the good news is it looks like it's the same site because uh, everything is here on the top, links here. Um, this is the new lesson catalog. So you've got uh, all of these lessons that are, that are in the current curriculum, um, but showing up in this new format. And we'll just take a um, peek at one that's easy to load because I don't want to wait too long. Introduction to YAML is a good one. Here's the new loading screen. configuring, and there we go. So we've got our lesson guide here to the left. Can run the snippet, everything shows up here. Now the cool thing about this is this is all XTermJS. So this is, so guacamole is dead, it's gone, like officially. Um, and uh, copy and paste works really well um, because of the way that this has all been built. So you can like copy, I'm not doing anything special, I'm just hitting control C. Control V. I mean, it's like, it's awesome. Um, so, uh, you know, feel free to tinker with this if you want. I would say probably hold off a little bit because there's a few things that I will need to do and I'm, I'm going to be taking it down and up and down and up and down and up. So, you know, if you want to take a look, obviously I can't stop you, but um, that's, you know, do so at your own, at your own uh, peril effectively. Uh, obviously when we have a more, uh, when, when we, I have a few more of these items checked off the list, I'll send the note to everybody to say, hey, you know, let's let's actually look at this for real. So uh, that's cool. Let me um, uh, go to the go to the list. I also one thing um, I moved the uh, relaunch plan to an issue on Antidote Ops. I figured that was a much better place for it. Um, the proposals document is still there, but it links here. Um, let's just see the the progress that I've been making on these um, on these checkboxes. So what's been done? Um, basically, um, the, like I said, I was waiting for the rest of the Batovi work to finish. That's done. Um, 
what I did was I just took what they had um, and uh, deployed it as it stood from the code. So there's no release yet. It's just deployed as of, you know, whatever the code is today. So there's obviously a lot more work we want to do to, to, to create a release. And there's a few things that I need to do to get my head around how that works. The way that the web portion has been built is that a lot of the components are actually in, uh, excuse me, in uh, separate um, repos. So um, those, either those need to get collapsed into Antidote Web or those other repos need to be um, uh, part of the platform release cycle. And I got to figure out how to, how, how to rationalize how we do that. Um, but the good news is there's, there's no more waiting on Batovi. Um, we're, we're, we're able to move forward at least until this point, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to, do the, to do the other things. Uh, like I said, the other things that we're waiting on are, are minor, but they do need to get done. There's things like, for instance, the WebSSH2 image, there's still some work that needs done there. Um, there's also the hamburger menu uh, bug that needed, needs fixed. So those need to be fixed before we create the actual releases and freeze that code. But um, I'm pretty confident that'll get done. Those are, those are fairly minor issues, way, way more minor than, than uh, the work that's been done um, to date. Sound good? Yep. Cool. So um, do you know when that uh, or what needs, it, would it be fairly simple to, uh, to um, change uh, self-medicate so that it uses, it doesn't create a, a um, guacamole container? Oh yeah. My, so yes, definitely. In fact, I'm already, I've already, um, started working. I mean, I have a PR open on, on um, changing self-medicate to, to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, uh, there's, there's a few, there's a, there's something that we're, there's this, so in Antidote Web, there's a, there's a, there's a way to configure the, the, the URL that's used for WebSSH2. And, um, and it needs to be, it needs to be made modular. That's one of the things that needs to be done. Right now I have it statically configured to the domain that we need in production. So obviously that can't be true if, if we're running in self-medicate. And so the first thing that needs to be done is that variable needs to be made. Um, well, it needs to be made a variable. And then once that's done, we should be able to continue the self-medicate work. So I, I, have it on, I have it on the list. It may not get done until after we go live, but we'll at some point definitely go back to self-medicate and, um, and uh, and get that working with uh, WebSSH too. Um, Matt, do you want me to put the um, marketing elements in this same place? Uh, I would prefer not, just because it's it's this is a this is a, a technical execution plan. But you can definitely link okay. to it from here. I'm, I'm happy to add a link from there. I do have okay. a section that's like, you know. I, I wrote some things down, some community marketing related to do's that are outside of the scope of this document, but a good idea to write down just in case. So I can just replace that section with a link to that plan because I do think it should be considered, obviously. I, I yeah. just want to keep it clean. Yeah, I was just thinking more in terms of, of you know, having the timeline all together in one place, but that's fine. Sure. Um, yeah, and this can be, I mean, you can even make this like a sub document of that if you want to have the timeline in yours, because I don't really have a timeline in mine. I don't have like a date. The only place, the only place I have dates are the platform releases and mm -hmm. the curriculum and the curriculum releases. And that's obviously not the launch date. That's a, that's a much earlier date. So yeah, you can do the timeline in yours and then I'll just, I'll, I'll be subservient to that. Okay. So, so let's talk about timeline then. Yeah, so um, that does lead me nicely into the next uh, next topic. Um, one of one of the the big milestones before relaunch is that we need to create release. Um, uh, we need to create releases for both the platform and the curriculum. The platform release process is um, well. The the curriculum release I created in, in September, um, and but I obviously changed the release the target release date, um, and I did this. I think last week or maybe even the week before I hit January 17th, 2020. I'll let Toad chime in on what he thinks about that. We might have to boot that another week. Um, I also copied that date in the release kickoff for the platform. Um, I'm more optimistic on this because really not much needs done on the platform. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the release, the release uh, plan for that, um, we got some, some, some things, like I said, that need to get incorporated here, but a lot of these, honestly, 
I like these antidote ops issues. Those don't need to be in here. I, I used to, what I used to do is I used to manage the antidote ops stuff every time we did a release, but I really should be working on that at, you know, at any time. <laughs> so um, given that this, uh, this PR is dealing with basically all of the minor stuff, I have no, I have no problem feeling that uh, the 0.5.0 release can be done by the end of this week. Um, provided, you know, the Arbitovi guy can, can tackle the two minor things he said he would. Um, so that's definitely doable. Um, January 17th, the question I guess will be, what is the date for the new, what is the new date for the curriculum um, release kickoff? Uh, now that I'm in a place where the site is deployed and, and working, I, I can really, really turn my attention this week. And this is one of the things I'll be doing um, to the to the things that are on my plate from the curriculum perspective, which is the new lessons that I signed up for. So the three that I have in mind are using time series databases, and I'm not going to call it this. It's going to be like something like time series databases for network engineers, something like that. Um, but I also have plans to expand the REST APIs lesson and the Git lesson. And I'm going to be, I'm not going to be, I mean, they're not necessarily new lessons, but they will be once I'm done with them. I mean, if you look at the existing REST APIs lesson, it's pretty, pretty bare bones. In fact, the Git lesson is even worse. It's like running three commands and you're done. Um, so they may as well be new lessons. Uh, I have, I have some pretty cool plans for the Git lesson in particular. Uh, I, in fact, this pull request to expand it, I think I started, God, in the summer. Uh, oh, maybe? I don't remember. Oh, Feb February 14th, <laughs> earlier than the summers. Oh, I'm sorry. I read this as, I read this as like January 2020, earlier, almost a year ago. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, that's been on my mind for a while. Um, so that, that'll be done. I think these things, could, especially if my attention is turning to them this week, which again, given that we're in a good place with the deployment of the new site, I, I do feel confident that that could happen. Um, then I am, uh, I'm confident that, that I can, I can at least put a huge dent in that this week, if not, if not actually do it. Um, the other stuff is pretty minor fixing the, uh, you know, the YAML import deprecated load function, which is just a warning, really making sure the stack storm lesson is actually fixed. Uh, it's probably a good idea. I think, I think Olivier opened an issue on that, that I need to add to this plan. Um, yeah, actually, here it is. Yeah, so that needs fixed. So other things need fixed, but that's that's about that's about the long and short of it. I, the things that will take the most time are the are the new lessons, new or modified lessons. So time series databases, Git lesson, REST APIs lesson. Those will make the the three, you know, big new content pushes that we that we've done. So I, I expect that I'll be able to get those done by the end of the week. Um, that said, uh, yeah. So so Toad, you are the release manager. What what are your thoughts on what I just said? Is that is end of the week a little too ambitious? Or do you think we should aim for a week out? Um, I, I'd say a week out. So that's the twenty fourth. Is that right? Um. Yes. What, yes. It's a Friday. Okay. Okay, and then so. So I guess we need to have a go no go vote on that Friday as well, or do we should we have the go no go? Because we were talking about release doing the launch the following Monday. The following Monday of the twenty fourth. Uh, sorry. Yeah, because that that would, no, you're right. We were talking about the first the first Monday of February. Yeah. The calendar. We we so if we if we yeah that'll give us that'll give us a full week. A little more than a full week, obviously with the weekend. So basically, a full week to. You're right. So we could we could have the go no go vote on the Monday or the Tuesday twenty eighth stand up then. Um, when are we going to do a week of testing? That's the big thing. So we need a bet between the between the dates of the release. Mm -hmm. So between between this item. Mm -hmm. And this. Uh, no, between, sorry, between this item and our, and between our go, no, go, there should be a week. Okay. So, well, we can definitely be, be testing the platform while waiting on the curriculum. Yes. Not really. I mean, I can, the, 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 the testing I have in mind is once everything's done, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, the, there's, there's, 
yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be both. Okay. Um, okay. So. Because we're we're doing we're doing both at the same time again. It doesn't. I mean, you if you it, like if if somebody was clueful enough, sure. But I, yeah, it, it will we'll rely on the automated testing for now. For the platform, so the formal testing that I'm talking about, people actually using lessons and and opening issues and things like that. Mm. that that's with everything done. That's with the 1.0.1 release live and the 0.5.0 release on top, you know, underneath it. Mm -hmm. And so basically what that means is we need to have this done, both of these releases done two weeks before we want to launch because we're going to want a week after the release of testing. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, we do a go, no go one week prior to launch. So if we're targeting, if the long tent pole is the curriculum launch or curriculum release, and that's the 24th, then our new go live date is at least two weeks from that. Well, if we allow the week of the 27th for testing, we could, we could have the go no go vote on the 4th. We could launch as early as the 5th. We could, we could launch on a Wednesday. Yeah, the only, the only, the only thing uh, that's uh, oh, did you guys see this by the way? Packets being acquired by Equinix. What? Okay. Get out of here! Yeah. Anyway, we'll probably talk about that. Um, that's fine. I just had in my notes hold a you go no go one week prior to launch. So if you want to do it like one day prior to launch, that's fine. I just yeah, you know, that's what that's what I wrote down. Okay, um, going to go February 4th. Um, is, there, is there a reason to have go no go a week prior? Uh, just for, I, I like adding buffer everywhere because of unknown problems. Yeah, I mean, if, if problems crop up, then we move the, the launch day. I mean, that, this is the beautiful thing about open source. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Yeah, let's let's do the go no go a day before we plan to launch. But just keep in mind there might there might be a no go, and we need to be ready for that. Okay. Well, I mean, or we can just we can push it to the following week. It's not the end of the world. Um, so that would be that would be Monday the tenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. could be Monday the tenth. Um, it couldn't be Tuesday the eleventh because I'll be on a plane. That's fine. My honestly, the thing that I'm worried about with respect to doing a no go is all of our non technical stuff like launch blogs, podcasts, web updates, things like that. I don't know how flexible. I mean, typically when I've been giving folks, you know, like if we're if we're going to be telling if we're going to be doing some sort of announcement on the Juniper side, mm. um, which I expect we will be hopefully, um, then we every time I've given them updates, it's been like you know weeks and weeks in advance. Yeah. So I, um, you know, I'm not sure how how nimble they'll be willing to be. Yeah, I, I, I think that, to be honest, I think Juniper is a secondary. Um, the Juniper apparatus is probably a secondary vehicle. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I just, I assumed that they were going to be a part of this at some point, and um, I would just want to make sure that they, they have the flexibility of, of saying, hey, we're not actually going live, even though we said we would. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like other launches, like actual Juniper launches, haven't ever been pushed at the last minute. <laughs> that happens true. in vendors. I guess that's true. <laughs> I once, I once, not not at Juniper. I once had a product team call me literally the night before, as I was about to 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 send stuff out at nine o'clock at night and say we're we're pulling the launch and we're pulling the product. Oy. And, and, and the only reason I hadn't already sent stuff out was because I was procrastinating and I hadn't sat back down on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so 2.11 for the launch. That's fine. When you're done writing this up, by the way, just send me a link and I'll put it in my issue. Okay. Okay, so um, Derek, last week you had said you would reach out to packet pushers. Have you had any conversations with them? Uh, no, it's still my mind. I'll do. I'll take care of that this week. Okay. Um, one thing I, I wanted to mention, um, uh, and I'll probably if I is uh, Stephen and Olivier, they're not on, right? No. 
all right, considering they're two of our more active members, I, I'll probably reach out to them before I do this, but I'll let everybody know on the call. Um, one thing I can do, and I would actually prefer to do ahead of launch, is migrate the, uh, the, the community site um, forums to the new domain, because uh, that, that doesn't matter. And only people that know or care to use that site will, will, will know about that. In fact, we can, we can even send out a notification on the site uh, yep. you know, now roughly that we're going to do that. And then I can do that like, at, you know, at the end of the week or over the weekend. Um, that just gives us that much less to do it on launch. And um, it'll also allow me to test redirects, make sure redirects are working for that. And, yep. make sure, you know, it's good. It's just like a good canary kind of test. Yeah, no, if we can get it done, so, yeah, the more we can get done sooner rather than later, probably the better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I just don't want to make the final cut over for the public site. Until the exactly, launch. exactly, yeah. So I have that on the list. I'll um, I'll 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 send out a notification today and, and say this is what we plan to do. And I'll say I'll say something like you know I'm going to do it you know Friday or Saturday, and um, you know just update your bookmarks. But everything else should be the same. It's just the domain. We're not going to lose data. It's just a just a migration of the domain. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll be discuss.nrelabs.io. Is that still that's kind of what we talked about last time? Is that still track with everybody? Everybody cool with that? I think so. It's kind of what most people do. I mean, like Stackstorm, Kubernetes, I think. A lot of people use the subdomain discuss. So I think that it's canonical, idiomatic. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's all on my plate. Um, like I said, the, the two things now, or really the main thing I'm focused on now, I mean, there's plenty of small minor things to do, but all of the heavy lifting that was required to get to this point, which by the way, I'm really excited about this. I don't know if you guys hear your voice. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys are, um, have, have looked at this yet, uh, or seen demos. I know Batovi gave me a few demos. I just wasn't sure like who saw what, but load this up on your phone. Just go to nrelabs.io on your phone and go through like uh, the YAML lesson. Um, there, like I mentioned, there's a bug with the hamburger menu. So if you, if you want to click the hamburger menu, it actually is always open. You just scroll to the right. Obviously that shouldn't be the case. Um, but other than that, the, it looks and works really well. And I cannot tell you how immensely, immensely satisfying it is to be able to go through a lesson on your phone without effort. Like it is crazy cool. Um, the keyboard shows up, it's really responsive. There's no like delay. It's, um, I'm, I'm really, really psyched about this. And I, I'm blown away that like, it, it, it's amazing to me how, the, how we're, where we're at. Like it really, <laughs> it really, it, it's amazing to me. Um, yeah, it looks amazing, dude. Uh, it's, um, and I feel like at some point, <laughs> you know, when I have time, I kind of want to go look, it, just to go through all the code that they made to understand how they did this. Because it's, it's like, it's a it's a good UI, right? It's it's mm -hmm. nice, yeah. And I and I just like to understand how they, they how they manage to do that. Yeah, and it's it's like I said, it's a it's a little it's a different subdomain because we're still going off of the oh that needs fixed post post. Wait, oh got it. It looks like this link in the enter. This is the this is the enter web. See, it says go .io, and if I hover over that, this is blog instead of post. Glad I clicked that. This is why we test. So blog, I'll, I'll fix that. That's easy to fix. Um, but yeah, no, um, uh, he actually, um, and, and Derek, you were in this, so you, you know this, but I'll, I'll let everybody else know. There's, um, there, uh, we, our, our contractor actually did like a knowledge transfer with us for like a full hour, I think maybe two hours. It was a long session um, where he talked about some of the things that he did and I recorded it. And uh, I think it's on our YouTube channel. I haven't made it public yet because I think I wanted to ask him if that was cool. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we at least have it. I'll, I'll work through um, how we can make that available to the community if, if they're, because yeah, obviously one of our priorities is attracting new platform developers and the web UI is now a major part of that given that it's written by not a toddler. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll have that as a resource. We, we wanna have that as a resource and we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. Anyway, I just thought this was really cool. It works really well on the phone. I think this is gonna really unlock like, it's gonna unlock some some additional things that we haven't really considered doing because of that. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about this, uh, especially given that we're like, you know, almost, you know, a little less than a month out from launch and we, you know, the pieces are starting to come together. I think it's, it's making me feel really good about where we're at. 
So next step is adding content. That's what I'll be doing in the next week is working on the new lessons that I wanted to, to make. Awesome. Okay. Um, Derek, do you want to talk about the curriculum side of things a little bit more? Well, that's largely closely tied to what <clears throat> I was just talking about. Uh, well, I, I think, I mean, I'm mainly working on converting Red Hat's lessons. Matt has some lessons he's going to work on. Um, and then we're just going to walk, you know, I vaguely, we haven't done a curriculum release yet um, under the new process. So I'm going to, man, I'm going to send an invite to, to go through that again, um, just to, just to be clear on it. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll have the red hat lessons and then we'll be able to, um, we'll, we'll go, you know, we'll prepare for a, a curriculum. Release. Sorry, you said red hat lessons? Uh, I Ansible. Yeah, the, the, yeah, that's what I figured you meant. What are those ready? No, I'm working on them. That's literally what I'm working on. <laughs> oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Um, to get you know, but <clears throat> I between those and your lessons, that'll be that'll constitute this release. I mean, it's not in the release plan. Do you want to add it? I don't. I, are you comfortable no. adding it to the release plan? Well, yeah. I mean, I we said we were going to have it done by the end of the month, didn't we? Yeah. Please add it to the release plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's... Honestly, I'm I'm leaning more towards giving it 1.0 or 1.1.0. If we're going to be adding, well, at least three new lessons. How many lessons are you is are in are in the Ansible set of lessons? Is that just one lesson as an example? Uh, it's going to be one lesson. I'm not going to do. There's a lot. There's a lot of material. It's, it's a one week class, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. You're not doing their whole. They're, you're, you know, I think the last thing we mentioned with them is we're not doing the whole thing just yet. We're doing one as an example, and then and then we'll be we'll be done. Yeah, yeah. That's well. I was gonna do a couple that were network related, um, but they're simple things like you know they're, you're changing the host name on a device or whatever, um, or an S or the the banner an SNMP, SNMP string and a host name. So basically like host properties of, of the devices. Uh, those are the ones I was going to work on. Or I, I am working, I should say. Or have done by the end of the month. Sorry, what's the what's the title of the lesson? Uh, I'm going to pull it up. Their uh, Ansible Workshop GitHub. I don't know what they call them. Each, it's like individual steps. Let me just cases. say, new lesson, introduction to Ansible. They call them weird things. So they call them um, like gathering facts, um, using Jinja, and first playbook, which is, uh, those are the three that I was going to do. because Those, those it, sound like good stage names. Like we could do like introduction to Ansible being the lesson name. And those are like the first three stages for that lesson. Yep, I, I I'd be okay with that. Um, <clears throat> it's the and the reason why I chose those is because if you look at their lesson, they they start doing stuff with tower. Um, every, the whole rest of the class is all about tower. So I, I just want to start with these, and then we can deal with tower later. <laughs> I I I approve the approach. I I figured you would. <laughs> yeah. Step one, pay Red Hat $100,000. Okay, cool. I do have one more thing to show, uh, by the way, I, but it doesn't have to be now. So I'll, I'll let you finish and then I got to share my screen again. Um, that's it. I, I'm going to schedule that to go through what the actual process is again, because I don't, it, I don't, it's been it's <clears throat> yeah. since we talked about it. So yeah, I, that's fine. Um, just use the existing self-medicate for now with guacamole. That'll, that'll have to do. Um, if I get around to it, I'm, I might circle back and do and, and get web SSH working in it with the, with the new platform code. But honestly, that's probably going to be less stable. Cause again, nothing, none of the platform has a release right now. So I, I don't, and I don't, I don't like adding platform stuff to self-medicate. That's not released. Cause that's not the goal of the tool. Right? No, I'm but, talking about the actual curriculum release process. No, I understand what I'm saying is what I'm saying is the, the thing that, that both sounds like both of us need to really, 
hammered down on this week is content, content, content. Yes. Even if it's on, even if it's on old, the old self medicate, that's fine. Cause the API is the same. Uh, you know, we're not making sub substantial changes to like less in definition formats. That's not until the next release, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, we'll, uh, yeah. So right now it's just like, you know, this week is literally all about just cranking out content and that's what we need to do. Cause that's now that's now that's the long tent pole. That's the thing that's actually standing out because everything else is pretty much done. So, okay, cool. Four new lessons for uh, effectively. I mean, like I said, the, the two of the ones that I'm taking on are technically, they technically exist, but they might as well not. So it's, it's really four four new lessons. And I mean lessons, I don't mean stages. So if anybody had any doubts as to how insane that is. <laughs> All right. Yep. That, that was largely my status. Okay. One more thing from me. Um, and I will point you to, where did I open it? General discussion, I think. Yeah. Lesson, lesson creation wizard. So um, this is further out. This is not, this is way after the relaunch. We're not touching, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, this is one of the, this is sort of my 20% project. Um, if you can consider it that I know it's NRE labs related, but um uh, it's something that I'm, I'm working on when I feel like stepping away from like relaunch activities. Um, I opened this PR a long time ago, uh, November, um, uh, which is the first step in MP1. You guys remember MP1, right? It's a big document that I created to make myself more insane. And the first piece of work is, uh, is effectively replacing the in memory state management kind of BS with, uh, with a proper database layer. Um, there's a few benefits to that. The, the, some of the some of the benefits you might anticipate, but there's a few other sort of un, unconventional benefits that were that I'm taking on in, in the same effort. And one of them is a command line tool to uh, to work with the resources that are defined. So the, the 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 new database package that's being built into Syringe, which will henceforth be known as just Antidote. Um, uh, that those are totally new models. So it used to be right now in syringe, all of the all of the data models that we have are, are written in protobuf and everything, um, including the API, but as well as all of the internal sort of, you know, in, when you ingest lessons into syringe from like the disk, um, those all use the same models, everything uses the same models. And it worked really well originally, because like I said, it was about, it was all about simplicity. But now it's like, as we're trying to get the API to do more complicated things, that means we have to like leak. There's no way to prevent that information from leaking into other parts. And it's just, it, it makes it really bad. Um, not to mention the tooling. Uh, now we could have done this before. We could have done this with the, with the protobuf tooling, but since we're revamping this, the models and making them what we want them to be, um, one thing I am taking on in this effort is decorating all of those models with JSON schema data. Now you might ask, why are you doing that? Well, if you have ever worked with Stackstorm and I used to work on the Stackstorm project, one of the things you can do is as you, um, uh, like if you wanted to use a pack, let's say the Twitter pack, um, every pack in Stackstorm needs to be configured. And so you got to put things like API keys and um, you got to enter lists of queries and things like that. And the way that you do that is, is through a YAML file. Um, now you can just copy the example YAML file and tweak it and then put that in place and say, hey, I want you to use this config, that's an option. Or if you wanted to write one from scratch, there's actually a wizard built into the Stackstorm CLI that iterates through all of those fields and interactively prompts the user to fill in those fields and then it, it creates the file for them. And it validates along the way and all of that. So at the end of that wizard, what you have is a working config. It's very useful. I think the main reason that's useful is because it lets the user see all of the things they can do um, and it also provides them with a little bit of a more human friendly, you know, guided way of, of doing it. So wouldn't it be cool if there was a way to create a lesson that was exactly like that? Well, there is. So antidote um, is the, like I said, it's the new command, the new, the, the platform, you know, syringe is going away. So the command line tool is just called antidote. Um, we will have a server side component called antidote D until, until the portion of MP1 comes up that breaks that apart. But for now, that's what we've got. Um, if you go to antidote, oh, and you know what? I am not running. This may not work. Oh, no, it will. Yeah, this doesn't work. This, this particular command doesn't require any database calls. I was just saying I don't have a Postgres container running, but I think that's okay. So if you go to antidote lesson uh, create, you'll see it says create our lesson using an interactive wizard. So again, what this does is it, is it takes what, what, what antidote knows a lesson should be. It takes the internal state of a lesson, the model, um, rather, and it 
it provides you with the opportunity to fill in all the fields. Um, so I just say in a lesson create and it goes through the fields of a lesson definition. Uh, some of these might be familiar to you, but I, I am taking the opportunity to sort of rethink the lesson definition format. So some of them might be new, but category, let's say fundamentals, collection, skip, description, food bar. I'll try to be quick here. No diagram, name, uh, new lesson, slug, new lesson. Tier, we'll say prod, video, no, prereqs, no, tags, no. Those are all arrays. You can just do comma separated lists. Um, uh, no connection, we'll just keep it simple. So no, no new connections. Uh, configuration type, again, these are the three configuration types we have. We have Napalm, Python, and Ansible. We'll say, we'll say Ansible. Um, image, antidote, labs, utility, name Linux one. And no additional ports. Now that endpoint needs to have presentations, so let's do that next. We'll do CLI, uh, port 22, SSH. Let's leave, it, let's leave it at that, no more presentations and, and also no more endpoints. Uh, okay, stages, description, uh, stage one, type a command. And then we'll do that in Markdown. Um, sure, let's do another stage. Uh, stage two, type yet another command. And we'll do this one in uh, Jupyter Notebook. And then, uh, no, that's it, no more lessons. And then it's prompting us for a location, saying, okay, hey, the current way that I have, you know, the, but basically the default value is to place the lesson in the sort of current directory slash lessons slash, and then the name of, uh, or rather the slug of the lesson. Um, so ideally this would be run in the curriculum directory and that way that would make sense. Um, I could make this more dynamic, but I, I'm willing, I, I'm, I'm thinking that just leaving it at this default value is good because you can always overwrite it. Um, you can overwrite it with your own location. Um, if, you do, uh, if you do enter, it'll just take the default. And the cool thing of, of, of what it does is it takes, it takes not only the lesson definition that you, that you effectively defined through this wizard, um, it writes that as a YAML file. So first off, it creates the lesson directory and then it, and then it writes that metadata file uh, to disk. Um, but it also, what it does is it goes through your, your lesson definition and say, well, you're going to want a new stage directory for, for the first stage. That stage is going to need its own uh, lesson guide. And, and you said you wanted a markdown file, so I'm going to create that. Um, it looks like you have an endpoint that's being configured with, um, with, a, uh, with an Ansible playbook. So we need to, we need to create an, uh, an Ansible playbook there. And that should be a .yml, so I need to fix that. But that's created. Um, same thing with the second stage. Uh, uh, and then instead of a markdown file, I created an IPython notebook. And those all have default values too. Like you, it, those are all bootstrapped with some basic uh, content. Now I do provide a note. I say, this is just a skeleton lesson. Obviously there's a lot more to do, mostly write the content and make the configurations. Um, so, uh, um, you know, basically saying like, you know, this is, this is a great starting point, but you, you've got a lot more work to do mostly on the content. I can't write the content for you. I can do everything else. I can automate everything else, but I can't write the content for you. And if we go to, if we go to tree lessons, you can see everything that's been created. We've got, we've got our, our, our lesson definition, test lesson, lesson not meta YAML. You can see that it's uh, been written. I, I want to sort of change the order because this is all, <laughs> this looks very robotic. This definitely looks like software created this lesson. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's mostly just an aesthetic thing because um, I like to have things in a specific order. Anyway, this is, um, this is one of the things that, I wanted to, that I've wanted to do for a long time, just haven't gotten around to. Um, but uh, you know, your feedback is welcome. It's, it's still obviously very much in progress. Uh, you, can either, you can either comment uh, here if you'd like on this, on this forum. I, I have the demo created, the demo uh, video here if you, you want to comment here. Um, you can also obviously comment on the PR, but just note that the PR is dealing with a lot of other things too. So if you just want to provide feedback on the CLI, you know, you can, you can do it here or, or there. It doesn't really matter to me. Any thoughts? Dope, Matt. Oh, thanks, James. Hmm. All right. Um, 
is there anything else? Uh, it's, um, or any questions about anything we've talked about so far? So one of the reasons that I joined is I was just curious about the marketing plan for amplifying the launch. Like, are you guys, I mean, you, you did mention packet pushers, but are you gonna talk to anybody else? Um, we could even see about, you know, sponsoring events or submitting talks to some events to try to get the word out over the, the coming months. But obviously, you know, obviously try to generate some news at the one point in time on the launch day. Yeah, so I mean, I th the the first order of business is to to get with packet pushers and see what they're what um, you know how they how they might want to work with us for this. Um, I'm a little leery of leaning too heavily on Juniper um, again, uh, you know, especially with um, the other piece here is the software freedom conservancy, um, and we do want to be clear that this is you know. A, a community project, not a Juniper project. Um, the Software Freedom Conservancy is supposed to be meeting again in February. Their evaluation committee is supposed to be re reconstituting itself in February. Um, so um, I'm pushing them to see what what the date of that is. If if we can, if that 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 date is going to happen before the launch, it would be great. Um, if we have that to announce as well, that would be awesome. Um, if we know either way, that would be great. Um, so uh, they, they haven't been super responsive, but we'll see what we can, I'll see what I can get out of them. Um, so uh, long story short, um, we had talked about and need to talk with packet pushers. Certainly, we'll have one or potentially a series of blogs, and I, I, I think, Matt, that there's probably enough here to, to do two or three. Um, perhaps one on one on the the platform changes and the, and the site changes. One, not so much on. I mean, you could we could sort of recap what the new new lessons are, but I think the more important thing is is the the simplified approach to um, building new lessons. Um, especially if, if we can have, um, well, we're not launching that. Oh, we're not launching that this time. No, the, the creation wizard that I just went through. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's way after the relaunch. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and, uh, we'll see kind of what other, as I say, I'm hoping we can get the software creative conservancy to, Make a call before the launch, but we'll see. Um, so just sort of community news. Um, and Do we have news. a shot with the SFC? It sounded like last time we talked, they were kind of just even even though they were busy. On top of the on top of the fact they were busy, they weren't looking to take on any new projects that didn't like need them. No, 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 no. So so they they're in the process of reconstituting themselves altogether. Got it. Um, so we have a shot. We just got to wait for them. Yeah, and so one of the things that you know they they told us back in whenever it was October November was that they're not taking any new projects while they revamped their their um, their whole process, um, and that they were going to um, reconstitute themselves. The evaluation committee would reconstitute themselves again in February. Um, so that's you know. We're coming up on February, and so what, I'm, what I would like to get out of them is kind of where they see themselves, um, and you know, it, if there are new things that we need to do to re-enter our application, um, so let us know sooner rather than later, etc. Okay, cool. I don't know anything about the software uh, conservancy, conservancy, but. Um, have you guys also talked to to the LF? Um, maybe you would know this, Lisa, but I'm, I'm kind of wondering if for an open source project, if there's a way of like asking them for a discount on a sponsorship or something like that too, if we don't approach them as Juniper, but the project. 
I, I'm not sure whom, approach whom? The LF. The Linux what about, Foundation. What about the Linux Foundation? I'm confused, sorry. This, this, uh, isn't well, a project that, this isn't a project that's going to be appropriate for the Linux Foundation. It would be appropriate to have it at something like the Open Networking Summit though, right? That's run by the Linux Foundation and possibly other LF events that they put on. Yeah, well, I mean, um, we, we, yes, if, you, if, you, if, if what you're saying is, is should we put in talks and that sort of thing, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I think we should submit a talk, um, but I'm just wondering about even like if they would consider giving us a booth or something like that at a discount where the community would pay for it instead of Juniper. Obviously, Juniper could sponsor some of that, but you know what I mean? Um, so right now, because because we're not under the Software Freedom Conservancy, the, the sponsor would be, the sponsorship would actually have to come from Juniper. But yes, we could we could look at that. Okay. So the Software Freedom Conservancy, James, is um, sort of a a smaller. It's another it's another open source foundation sort of in the same vein, I suppose you could say, as the Linux Foundation, although they they, they have different criteria, they operate differently. Um, they're, what they, they do for particular projects is different and so on. Sounds good. And just on the news front and stuff, have we considered talking to some other folks other than packet pushers, like Network World or even some analysts. We could obviously talk to people like, you know, Ivan and IP Space. Um, didn't you say somebody told me? I think Stephen Keeley, who's part of this community, you know, pretty often has joined Network to Code, or somebody has joined Network to Code. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's correct. Having him like drop a note inside of the Network to Code community forum, saying, you know, take a look at NRE Labs new launch I mean that would be appropriate for sure mm -hmm. yeah so I think that we need to talk through um, as our that, that was actually going to be if we have time oh actually we're coming up on on time I will put together a a proposed list of, of targets because um, we're almost at the top of the hour um, and I will put that in the plan um, and the marketing plan for comment. Um, and we'll go from there. Yeah, FYI, the the network to code thing. I'm, I'm I uh, reached out to Jason. They um, we didn't get in touch synchronously because it was on Slack, so I didn't get a chance to you know set anything up with him. But at, at um, having a call with him this week is a priority for me. Cool. I'm tackling that one at the head. Awesome. Cool. Hey, Matt, I, I don't know if you heard when uh, you joined a couple minutes after me, but this fellow that's on here, Paul, he uh, came to our talk in L.A. And um, I was thinking about L.A. and Open Networking Summit because Open Networking Summit's happening back there and the call for papers is, is open for a couple more weeks. So we should try to submit something to that CFP. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. You know. you know, this is the first time we've gone for a full hour in a long time. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, gives you, uh, gives you a lot of energy. <laughs> um, Cool. And then Paul, um, just so just as I know as you're, you're starting to get your feet wet, there, there is actually, this is one of the better documented open source projects I've been involved with. Um, so do, do take a look at the community, the, the docs. Um, there's, there's docs both for users as well as for potential developers. Um, so, and, and that's often a great place to get started with, with um, contributing to a community, if that's something that you're interested in as well is if you, as you're working on, uh, working your way through lessons and so forth, if, if there's sort of a gap 
in the documentation um, and you have suggestions for improving it, you know, we're happy to help you do that. Perfect. Yeah, happy to jump in and uh, uh, happy to jump in with some testing here in the next couple of weeks if you uh, awesome outside pair of eyes. Um, yes, yes, yes. That'd be great. You know, um, one of the things I'm working on is uh, terraforming our cloud infrastructure right now. So if you must do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the middle of a friggin' deploy. <laughs> Literally doing exactly that, terraforming Cloudflare. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, happy to uh, start contributing little bits as I uh, uh, as I can. Cool. We do this every we do this every week. So you know, like I said, um, if you're if you're um, if, you know if you're if you're interested in getting involved with any of that stuff, just you know pop in. This is easily the best uh, way to get a hold of us. In the meantime, we're all on the community forums. Check those out, and we'll we'll respond there too. Cool. All right, so we're at the top of the hour, um, and I know I need to go run to run to another thing. Um, but cool, and um, I will I will work on the, the fleshing out the plan in the background, and we'll go from there. All right. Um, then uh, there's nothing else. We'll call time of death um, exactly 11 a.m. Thanks everyone for joining, and I'll have this up on the on the YouTube site um, probably today or tomorrow morning. All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brian.